Hi everyone, Dr. Hill here. I want to take the time today to talk to you about thyroid function, go over some of the concepts behind what it is you really need to be thinking about when you're discussing the thyroid with your doctor. Um, kind of give you an idea about some of the uh, areas that you're going to want to think outside of uh, just the thyroid gland when we're talking about thyroid function. So what I want to do is kind of kind of give you an overview of how the thyroid works and that way you'll have a better concept of what it actually is you might want to be looking for when you start talking about labs and how to get the most information out of your labs to actually know if the thyroid is a problem or not. So when we talk about the thyroid, normally the hormone that we talk about in terms of lab assessment is going to be a hormone known as TSH. And that stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. And thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH is going to be produced from from the pituitary gland and it's going to go down to the thyroid and it's going to tell the thyroid to produce more hormone. Um, the TSH itself is not actually a hormone produced from the thyroid, it is again produced from the brain, from the pituitary region in the brain. From here what you're going to get is you're going to get the production of, once this TSH stimulates the thyroid, you're going to get production of what's known as T4. And this T4 is going to be shuttled over to the liver into the kidneys to some degree and what you're going to see is that in the liver here you're going to get conversion of this T4 to T3 and the conversion of T4 to T3 is pretty important there because most of the time when we talk about, uh, about thyroid hormones we generally leave the conversation in T4 but the important thing here is that T4 is not the actual active thyroid hormone in the body for activity to occur in the body based off of thyroid hormone, you need to make sure that that conversion to T3 takes place. Now, a couple of things that are pretty important here as far as nutrients go is you gotta have selenium to get from T4 to T3. The process of making adequate, um, the adequate enzyme to make that conversion is selenium dependent. So without selenium here, one of your major antioxidants, that conversion isn't going to take place. So once you've got your T3, then what begins to happen is you come from the liver and to some degree from the kidney, and you also get some production from the uh, from secondary from the uh, gastrointestinal tract as well through the action of bacteria on the thyroid hormone. So making sure that you have good probiotic levels there. But then once that T3 is available, that T3 can then go to the cell and it can then begin to cause a reaction to take place, can speed up the metabolism and have those overall normal metabolic effects that we think about with thyroid function. Now, when it comes to addressing any type of dysfunction associated with the thyroid, we don't want to think just at the thyroid gland because again, it's not just about what's at the gland, it's about how that hormone produced from the gland is being converted and then ultimately how that conversion is interacting on the cell. As you'll note, there's a couple of steps that take place here, so inherently you would think from that also that there's a couple of interactions that could take place, so I want to talk about a few of what a few of those might be also. So when we look at this, one of the things that I'll start off with here is going to be stress, and when we talk about stress, we're really going to better try to define that through the action of cortisol. And cortisol is very unique where the thyroid is concerned. Um, essentially what you're going to see happen here is that the longer and more pronounced that this stress response that occurs and the more cortisol that begins to be, become secreted, you're actually going to see that the TSH secretion down to the thyroid doesn't become quite as efficient. You're also going to note that the ability of the thyroid gland itself to produce thyroid hormone becomes less efficient and you, once, even if the thyroid gland can produce the hormone, then you're going to have the risk of a secondary effect where instead of going over directly to T3, your T4 converts over to something called reverse T3. And reverse T3 doesn't have any significant effect, so it's not going to come down to the, to the tissues in the, in the body and stimulate those tissues to have their normal metabolic effects. Um, and lastly here, your cortisol can um, or your cortisol is needed in adequate quantities because typically we'll, we'll see, that, uh, see that individuals will have a low level of cortisol. So you actually need cortisol to stimulate the cells to be able to accept thyroid hormone and utilize it efficiently. So cortisol actually has a, has a balancing effect there. Now with regards to nutrition, we always want to begin to think about, back about how nutrition can affect this scenario. So in regards to 
looking at our production of T4 here, to have T4 we've got to have adequate protein consumption, we've got to have adequate iodine, um, we need copper available to take that iodine and put it on the, on the proteins or on the amino acids there so we can actually make the thyroid hormone. Once that's made, again, going back to the conversion here, we talked a little bit earlier about selenium. Selenium is needed in this process. Um, and then going down to the, to the uh, uh, cell itself, you're also gonna need, um, you're gonna need uh, zinc here to make sure that the cell can take up and utilize the thyroid hormone efficiently. We also know that vitamin A, vitamin D, and iron are also involved in these different steps as well. So. This is just an overview for, for thyroid hormone metabolism. I just wanted you to kind of have a little bit, a little bit of background on this. So um, as you're reading through some of the articles, you have some type of visualization to be able to help better understand um, exactly what it is we're talking about here. So thanks for, thanks for listening, Dr. Arlen Hill.